all said, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Please stand for the reading of our scripture. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. As we go forth from this place, let the memory of Jesus' baptism inspire us to live lives worthy of the calling you have given us. Help us to be messengers of your love, bearers of your peace, and examples of your justice in this world. In Christ's name, amen. amen. You may be seated. And hello, Faith Westwood. And good morning to all those who are worshiping on site today, as well as those who are worshiping online. There's such a great spirit in worship here today. Amen. And I hope that those online are also joining in this beautiful spirit. Now, I want to remind you that the Lenten season begins this week on Ash Wednesday, February 14th. We are offering several opportunities for you to experience this. drive through ashes are going to be offered on Wednesday from 11 to 1 and 3 to 5 at the east entrance of the church. And that there will be a traditional service right here in this worship center at 7 o'clock. All opportunities are going to include imposition of ashes and communion. So we hope to see you at one of those opportunities. Now, our sermon series, Let It Flow, is going to actually flow into next weekend's first Sunday in Lent with a story about the temptation of Jesus. This is also going to serve as a pivot into our new series, Go. And you will also hear a special testimony from one of our church family members, so look forward to that. Now, the Go Study Guide, Lenten Schedule Overview, as well as an offering box will be available for you to pick up on Wednesday or next Sunday. Now, I want to share more with you about the Greater Love Offering that was introduced in the Thursday Pastor email. This is going to be a new offering during special seasons in the church, like Lent, Thanksgiving, and even Christmas. Offerings collected will be utilized by the Missions Committee for greatest needs of our existing mission partnerships or additional projects and needs that emerge. Now, we are st I know it doesn't feel like it, but we're still in winter, but we know soon spring will be here, and we know that there's natural disasters, there's tornadoes and spring storms, and we know that oftentimes we are called to take up a special offering, so that is something that can be utilized by this Greater Love Offering, so stay tuned for more details. Now, Let It Flow has allowed us to encounter stories where God's people have been thirsting for water and righteousness. In addition, we've been able to claim how the gift of water inspires, blesses, and sometimes even challenges God's people. Today, we remember that at the baptism of Jesus, the heavens opened and God's voice affirmed Jesus as the beloved son. After our message today, we're also going to reaffirm our baptismal covenant and celebrate how we too are beloved. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Your identity is important, especially today. You may be wearing your favorite team colors. 
You may claim your identity as a Chiefs fan or a 49ers fan or another team that didn't even make it to the big game. But you may be even cheering on the commercials today. How many of them? Yes. Now, I have to say that until I was 24 years old, I didn't have any identity with any professional football team. I married into a family of Packers fans. And so I have to say, I like my green and gold, but today I decided to catch more flies with honey and wear some red. So, Now, it goes without saying, though, that our true identity is not with the colors that we might be wearing. Our true identity is found in Jesus Christ. Amen? That is the bottom line for us today, and it's important for us to establish this before we flow into what baptism meant for Jesus and what it means for us. Now, for several weeks, we've been in the Old Testament, journeying with God's people through those wilderness moments. Last week, we heard the prophet Isaiah relay the Lord's words to God's people. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. Those words are powerful, and those are worthy to be repeated again today. Isaiah prophesied the coming of the Messiah to fill God's people with a sense of longing and anticipation of his arrival. Then John the Baptist was born for a very important purpose, to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord Jesus. And he did this in the Judean wilderness. Now, honestly, John the Baptist must have looked like a wild man, right? wearing camel's hair, eating locusts and honey. And he must have sounded like a wild man too, telling people to come out to the wilderness so that they could repent and be baptized in the Jordan River. His baptism was to help the Jewish people to renew their faith through a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of their sins. The Greek word for repentance means to change one's mind, reflecting an understanding of the Hebrew verb to turn around. We talked about repentance a couple of weeks ago with David. Remember David? He poured out his water as a drink offering. True repentance, though, is turning away from sin and turning toward that which is holy. Now, those in the Judean wilderness who received that particular baptism of John the Baptist received that baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of their sins. And those people that went out into the wilderness, they were looking for spiritual renewal. They were depleted mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and even spiritually. Remember that they lived in a very tumultuous time when there was this clash of of Roman and Greek cultures. They were facing an oppressive government and economic instability. They were desperately looking for the light that shines in the darkness that Isaiah had prophesied. Their religious and their spiritual faith meant something to them. Yet they were so weary waiting for the promised Messiah. The baptism then gave them something to hold on to, something that kept their minds and their hearts and their spirits focused on God, to remember all of God's promises for generations, and to give them that opportunity to reconnect with their God in such a way to give them strength and renewal for their journeys. And while they were waiting, John the Baptist was very clear that his baptism with water would be followed by a baptism with the Holy Spirit by the Messiah. So I want you to imagine the scene. One day, Jesus came from Galilee and was baptized by John in the River Jordan. Mark's version of the story is very short and to the point. Yet, as Jesus was coming up out of the water... It looked like the heavens were ripped open. It opened up and the spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. Then that voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I want you to imagine being there when this happened. It had to be an amazing spiritual experience. Especially for John the Baptist who was doing the baptizing. And for Jesus who received that baptism. Now, Mark's gospel doesn't reveal to us whether the people experienced this heavenly scene. 
Yet for generations, we have remembered this story and believed that at the baptism of Jesus, this was important for his transition into public ministry. Jesus was soon going to be tested by the devil in the wilderness. And then Jesus would begin a journey of proclaiming God's kingdom values, bringing good news to those people who needed it most. Now, my very wise pastor farmer husband once said, Jesus' baptism was transitional, yet our baptism is transformational. So when we reflect on what baptism means to us, we remember that at our baptism, we claim our true identity in Christ as we continue to grasp what it means to be precious, honored, and loved, as well as what it means to be created uniquely, wonderfully, and with purpose by our Creator. We also claim that these waters of baptism have a purpose, connecting us with God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, reassuring us of God's presence and promises, transforming us from who we were before Christ, inspiring us to live as new creations, uniting us with other Christian believers, calling us as Christ's representatives in the world, and sending us into mission and ministry. Yet I have to admit that long after the water of baptism dries, you and I are going to have to remember our baptism covenant. Why? Because we forget. We forget. We forget that, that we are precious and honored and loved. We forget that we are created uniquely and wonderfully and with purpose by our Creator. We must claim that at our baptism, our transformation begins. And it continues through the mission and ministry that we carry out in Jesus' name. The Let It Flow series has always, already reminded us the value of drinking water, troubling water, and now refreshing water. Now, I want you to think about how many times you and I encounter water throughout our days, right? You drink water. I need a drink. You bathe, hopefully. You wash your clothes, we hope. You wash your hands often. You cook with water. You and I come into contact with gallons of water each day. You and I give thanks to God for the gift of this water. And honestly, you can remember your baptism every time you touch water. Remembering your baptism should become a regular part of your day. Doing so helps you and I to renew our faith and to remember who we are and to remember whose we are. Now, at his baptism, Jesus heard words of love and affirmation from God his Father. In our, our baptisms, we too receive the gift of our Creator's amazing love and grace. God says to you and me, you are my dear child, and I am delighted in you. In September 1971, there were two young parents who stood in the front of a United Methodist Church to take baptismal vows on behalf of their first child, a daughter. Reverend Warren Spellman blessed the water and he sprinkled it on Cynthia Sue. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He asked that the Holy Spirit work within her, having been born of water and the Spirit, that she might live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Being baptized as an infant, I didn't remember my baptism. Nor did I think about it much until January 2006 when I was at the Jordan River in Israel. That morning, it was about 70 degrees outside, and it was about 40 degrees in the water. This picture represents exactly what I saw. It truly was like the heavens were being opened and, and the light was shining down on us. It was such a powerful moment. Some people went into the water, the very cold water, but others just stood on the shore. 
And then our Old Testament professor, Dr. Gordon Harris, he, he reached down into the water of the Jordan and he picked up water and he splashed it on us. <laughs> and I remember that when those drips were running down my face, with those words, hearing those words, remember your baptism and be thankful. I remember closing my eyes and thinking, Lord, I really wish that I could remember my baptism. Suddenly, my mind was transported to my home church in Syracuse, Nebraska. From a balcony view, I saw two parents holding a baby and a pastor at the baptismal font. It was such a spirit-filled vision that tears began to run down my face. Was it really possible that I saw my baptism and not just what I imagined it to be? Now I have to say, next picture, while I was there, I took the opportunity to collect water from the River Jordan to take back to my churches. I still have water in my freezer, and I pull it out for days like today. I thaw it, I boil it, and then I strain it, and then I allow it to be blessed and shared in the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant that in a few moments we will participate in. Now I have to tell you that when I got back to the tour bus in Israel that day, my religion professor said, something happened while you were there. He said, can you share with me your experience and share with me those emotions that you felt? And so I told him about what I experienced. And he said, Cindy, the Jordan River holds all of our baptism memories. Isn't that beautiful? But there's even more to the story, of course. On my way home from Israel to Stanton, Nebraska, where I lived at that time, I kept thinking about the vision I had. And I assumed that, that the picture I had in my mind was actually a picture that was taken on the day of my baptism. So when I got home, after I got to see my husband and my two beautiful girls, I went and searching, and I went down into my baby book, and I was flipping through my baby book, and I was looking for pictures of the baptism, but I only found pictures that were taken at our house with my parents and with my grandmothers. I called my dad, and I asked him about it, and he said, oh, Cindy, please don't talk to your mother about this. This is a really sore subject, even to this day. He said, we forgot the camera at the church that morning. So honestly, I believe and claim what Dr. Harris shared. The Jordan River holds all of our baptism memories. And I do believe with my whole heart that the Holy Spirit allowed me to actually see my baptism in those moments. Now, friends, later this day, I know that there's a big game. I know that you have your favorite colors. I know you have your team spirit. But don't miss out on the opportunity today to claim your identity in Christ. As you remember your baptism, renew your faith, renew your commitment to Christ, and claim that the River Jordan holds all of our baptism memories. In the name of Christ, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious and ever-loving God, we thank you and we praise you for the blessing of this day. To remember the baptism of Jesus when you declared that he was beloved. And to remember our own baptisms and to claim that we are your children and that you love us so very much that you would give your love and grace to us. So in the name of Jesus Christ today, let us claim what you want us to claim. Let us remember our baptisms and to be thankful. And God, all of this we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.